de la Asamblea General. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Mahmoud Abbas, President of the State of Palestine, and to invite him to address the Assembly. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, Your Excellency Chaba Korochi, President of the General Assembly, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, heads and members of delegations, may the peace of God be upon you. I am addressing you today on behalf of more than 14 million Palestinians whose fathers and ancestors have lived the tragic Nakba 74, 74 years ago, and they are still living the spillovers of this Nakba, which which is a humiliation for the whole humanity, and especially for those who have conspired, planned, and executed this heinous crime. More than five million Palestinians have been living under the Israeli military occupation for more than 54 years. And I would like to tell you today, on behalf of the Palestinians, whom I am proud to belong to, that our trust in the possibility of achieving a peace based on justice and international law is unfortunately regressing. Because of the Israeli occupation policies, do you want, ladies and gentlemen, to smother whatever hope we still have? It is clear, ladies and gentlemen, that Israel, which is ignoring the resolutions of the international legitimacy, has decided not to be our partner in the peace process. It has undermined the Oslo Accords, which it had signed with the PLO. It has and still is through its current policies, which are premeditated and deliberate, destroying the two-state solution. This proves unequivocally that Israel does not believe in peace. It believes in, the, in imposing a status quo by force and by aggression. Therefore, we do not have an Israeli partner anymore to whom we can talk. Israel is thus ending its contractual relation with us. And it is making the relationship between the state of Palestine and Israel a relationship between an occupying state and an occupied people, nothing more. Therefore, we will only deal with Israel as such. And we call upon the international community to deal with it as such as well. Israel has chosen that itself. We did not make that choice. Israel made that choice. Israel is launching a frantic campaign to confiscate our lands, to build settlements, to loot our resources, as if this land is empty and has no owners, exactly as it did in 1948. Israel is giving total freedom to the army and to the terrorist settlers who are killing the Palestinian people in broad daylight, looting their land and their water, burning and demolishing their homes, 
compelling them to pay for the demolition or forcing them to destroy their homes with their own hands and uproot their trees. All this with an official protection. Can you imagine what is happening? Israel is telling the Palestinian people, either you demolish your house or I will demolish it myself. But demolish it yourself with your own hands, it's better, because if I demolish it, you will have to pay the cost of the demolishing. Have you ever heard about this? Can you imagine what is happening? This is what is taking place. I have to demolish my house or they demolish my house and they make me pay for it. Furthermore, the Israeli government has authorized the establishment of Jewish racist terrorist organizations exercising terrorism against our people. They have provided them with protection while they are aggressing the Palestinians and calling to expel them from their homes. On top of these terrorist organizations, I mention the Hilltop Youth, Price Tag, Lehava, the Temple Guardians, and many others. These terrorist organizations are being led by members of the Israeli Knesset. by members of the Israeli legitimacy. And in this context, we call upon the international community to list these terrorist organizations on the international terrorism lists. This is the only place they deserve. Israel did not leave us any land on which we can establish our independent state in the frame of its frantic settlement expansion. Where will our people live in freedom and dignity? Where, will our, where can we build our independent state that will live in peace with its neighbors? We want to live in peace with them, with them, with Israel. Where will we establish our independent state to live in peace with them? The settlements, unfortunately, constitute 751,000, or 25% of the total population, 25% in the West Bank, the Palestinian land which remains for us. Israel is killing our people with impunity, as it did with the Palestinian journalist Shirin Abu Akli. You have all heard of Shirin Abu Akli. She was killed with the bullets of a sniper. It means that the sniper deliberately killed her, and Israel recognized that the sniper recognized that he did kill her. And besides her Palestinian nationality, she also has the, nation, the American nationality. And I would, I dare the United States to prosecute those who have killed this American national. Why? Because they are Israelis. Israel is also targeting our sacred holy sites, Christian and Islamic, especially in Jerusalem, our eternal capital and the crown jewel. And I would like to reiterate here our attachment to the Hashemite custodianship on these holy sites. Those are the Muslim and Christian holy sites that are being targeted on a daily basis by Israel. 
without any justification every day. Here they are attacking the funerals of Shireen Abu Akli inside the church, inside that holy uh, place. They have attacked the procession, and this is what Israel is doing in the holy sites. Israel is also impos imposing falsified curricula in our schools in occupied Jerusalem. They are inventing curricula. With the same authors, they take the book and they change what is put in that book, and then they impose the curricula on our children to control what they are learning. This is a violation of international law. Israel is also disrupting the presidential and legislative Palestinian elections by forbidding the Palestinian citizens in Jerusalem to take part in these elections. And this has taken place in 1996, in 2005, and in 2006. So there are three precedents, three times where they did so. And they ask us, why don't you organize elections? We are ready. We have issued the decrees to organize these elections, and we have decided to organize the elections, but Israel did not allow us to do so. Therefore, we did not cancel the elections. We only postponed them. When Israel allows or when some tell her that she can allow or when some order Israel that they can allow for these elections to take place, then we will organize them. Israel is enacting racist laws, consecrating the apartheid regime. Yes, apartheid. And if they do not like the appellation, this is the truth. They are an apartheid regime. not only between Palestinians and Jews. They are doing so against our people before the eyes on the international community with total impunity. Why isn't Israel being held accountable for violating international law? Who is protecting Israel from being held accountable? I have no idea. Do you know? Do you know who is protecting Israel from being held accountable? The United Nations. And on top of the United Nations, the most powerful in the United Nations. Why these double standards? Why do, do they, don't they treat us equally with the others? Why these double standards when it comes to Israel? Israel did not hesitate to repeatedly violate our land, and recently they have closed the headquarters of six human rights, Palestinian human rights organizations. They, we, they want the law, they try to implement, uh, to, to implement the law, but if we make a mistake, they hold us accountable and they say, you have made a mistake. Suddenly, Israel considers that these organizations are terrorist organizations and they raid their headquarters and they loot their uh, assets. They confiscate their documents and burn them. They do whatever they please. And the whole word is saying that this is wrong, except for Israel. It is saying that it is not wrong. This is what Israel has done in the offices of these human rights organizations. What would it have done if they weren't human rights organizations? Ladies and gentlemen, Israel, ever since it was 
created, has committed heinous crimes against our people. When they destroyed 529 Palestinian villages, expelling their dwellers during and after the war of 1948. They have displaced. A figure that some try to manipulate sometimes. They have displaced 950,000 Palestinian refugees, so half of the Palestinian people back then, 950,000, not as Israel says, 250,000. No, 950,000. Those are the UNRWA statistics. So the UN statistics. And of course, now they account for millions. Israel has committed ever since and until now more than 50 massacres, more than 50 massacres since 1948 and until today. And some of those massacres have been recently committed and Israel recognized that it had deliberately committed these massacres and that they have targeted the farmers coming back from their agricultural land and they killed them in cold blood. 50 or 51 massacres. The most recent of which was against Gaza, which was targeted with missiles. I will not tell you how many elderly it killed, but the New York Times, it's a U.S. newspaper, so the New York Times said 67 children were killed in Gaza. Of course, they were carrying uh, missiles and they were in tanks and they were launching missiles, 67 children. Those are their photos. They were killed by Israel. Who is going to assume this responsibility and why did Israel kill them? And I would like to give you lists of these villages that were destroyed, of these massacres that were perpetrated, and I would like to ask Israel from this rostrum to recognize its responsibility for destroying these villages, committing these massacres, and displacing the Palestinian citizens, and to apologize to the Palestinian people. After all this killing, they have to apologize. We call them to bear the legal, political, moral, and material responsibility. They should be held accountable. And the international community should hold them accountable. We ask the international community right now to hold them accountable for what they have done for the massacres they have committed. And we will go to the International Criminal Court, yes. And to all the courts of the world. But first and foremost to the International Criminal Court to ask Israel to shoulder its legal, political, moral, and financial responsibilities. I ask here, does the Israeli people want to remain a colonizing people forever? They have been so for 75 years. Until when? I would like to ask you, should we wait for a century or maybe for two centuries? We are the only people on this planet still living under occupation. Why? Why? 
you as a general assembly, you members of the Security Council, you advocates of human rights, why should we remain under occupation? What are we still waiting for? What are the Israelis going to teach us? Why should they be occupying us or teach us or kill us or confiscate our land, loot our resources, even the rain which falls on us is being taken by them and then they sell it back to us. They take our rain and then they sell it back to us. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not accept to remain the only party respecting the agreements we have signed with Israel in 1993. Those agreements are not valid anymore because of the persisting violations of Israel. And although we have asked Israel to end its occupation and its hostile measures and policies and end all the unilateral actions that were stated explicitly in the Oslo Accords and which President Biden mentioned to me in person, he said that unilateral actions should be ended and Israel was the first to violate this and it is taking all unilateral actions while we haven't taken any unilateral action and we do not want to do that and we do not want to violate laws. But until when? Until when we will respect and be the only ones respecting these agreements? Therefore, it is our right, rather our obligation, to look for other means to recover our rights and to achieve a peace built on justice, including the implementation of the resolutions that were adopted by our leaderships, especially our parliament. Seven years ago, the parliament adopted decisions and we used to tell them, wait for a little for late for a while, maybe things will change, be patient, maybe uh, the US or Israel will change their stance, but no one listened to us. We are making these decisions in order to preserve our national existence on our land and in order to uphold our historical rights in our nation under the umbrella of the PLO, the only legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, which brings together all the people, uh, all the Palestinian people, wherever they are in the world, inside Palestine, in the refugee camps, and in the diaspora. All those who have the Palestinian nationality or used to have the Palestinian nationality fall under the umbrella of the PLO. Dear participants, the United Nations in its different organs has adopted hundreds of resolutions on Palestine. None was implemented. Is it possible? N not a single resolution was implemented. 754 resolutions from the General Assembly, 97 resolutions from the Security Council, 96 resolutions from the Human Rights Council, and not one was implemented. How come? Why? Why, when a resolution is taken here or there, everyone calls for its implementation and calls for implementing the international legitimacy, while all these resolutions were adopted for Palestine and no one cares? 
not a single resolution. Implement one single resolution and tell us we have implemented it. We want the implementation of a single resolution. And right now, Resolution 181, which you have adopted. Resolution 181 is the resolution that we want to be implemented. We want you to implement Resolution 181. And with it, another resolution. Why? Resolution 194, because those two resolutions are preconditions to accept Israel as member of the United Nations. And Moshe Shared back then, the uh, foreign minister of Israel, said that he pledges to implement these two resolutions, and therefore Israel was accepted as member of the UN. But until now, neither resolution was implemented. I want the resolution 181 to be implemented. One single resolution. It is our right to ask for its implementation. So go ahead, implement it, and tell us that you have done so. We have submitted a request to the Secretary General to implement this resolution. Is it possible? Or are you going to ignore us once again, as you have been doing for so long? The State of Palestine will also start the accession process to join other international organizations. We were allowed to join as an observer state to the UN. We are an observer state in the United Nations. 15 million Palestinians, all of them educated. All of them highly educated, but we are only observer members. Fine. But this membership allowed us to accede to other international organizations. And starting tomorrow, we will pursue this. And it is our right to do so. And we will be joining the WHO, the WIPO, and the ICAO. We are going to accede to these organizations, and this is our right, and no one can blame us. The Security Council has adopted a clear resolutions, the implementation of which will achieve a just and comprehensive peace, the most recent of which was Resolution 2334. In 2016, the Security Council and the United States itself submitted this resolution. The resolution was adopted, and two days later, Mr. Trump cancelled everything, including this resolution, and came up with the ultimate deal and all his other projects that we have uh, totally rejected. That was a resolution submitted by the United States and adopted uh, under, uh, with the sponsorship of the United States, but it has disappeared. Why? Because Mr. Trump rejected it. And I would like to remind you that we do not need double standards anymore. If we are prohibited from getting a full membership for the state of Palestine in the United Nations and uh, protecting the Palestinian people. We have been asking you to protect us from aggression, but uh, no one has done anything. And uh, if no practical measures are taken to end occupation and achieve peace, it will, it, uh, we will have to resort once again to the General Assembly. and ask the resolution to take the necessary legal and political steps to achieve that goal. And then we hope, we have the right to hope, 
We hope to be able to hope. We are living on this hope. We are confident. We are confident that the General Assembly, which will fully, fully shoulder its responsibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that you will understand why we are going to take all these measures now. Throughout the past years, we have tried everything in order to convince Israel to go back to the negotiation table. based on the resolutions of the international legitimacy and the signed agreements, but Israel refused and is still refusing to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, with all due respect to what the international community has done or has tried to do, at least because they haven't done everything, So despite what the international community has done or tried to do in terms of supporting politically and materially our people and our just cause, it was unfortunately unable to end occupation and to end the heinous and continuous Israeli aggression on our people and to protect our people. We want to be protected. Please protect us. Protect us. We will not resort to weapons. We will not resort to violence, I promise you. We will not resort to terrorism. We will fight terrorism with you, hand in hand. But protect us from violence, like you are doing for the other peoples of the world. Today, the occupying state is acting as a state above the law. Why? Do you know why Israel is acting as if it were a state above the law? Why? Can anyone answer me? No one will answer me. Surprisingly, states like the United States pretend to uphold international law and human rights while at the same time providing, and I will speak uh, frankly here, while at the same time providing unlimited support to Israel, protecting Israel from accountability, and assisting Israel to pursue its hostile policies in contempt to the whole international community. Israel wouldn't have been able to do what it did without the cover or the support of these states. Honestly put, if you don't want to say it, because it is not politically correct, I will say it. Some of these states were partners at the very beginning, in adopting the decisions that led to the Nakba of the Palestinian people, the famous Balfour Declaration. Do you remember the Balfour Declaration? Of course, you do not remember it because we are the only ones suffering its consequences. And after the Balfour Declaration, the mandate And the sustained injustice against the Palestinian people when they refused to compel Israel to end its occupation and aggression and to respect the decisions of the international legitimacy. Therefore, these states bear, along with Israel, the responsibility for the plight of the Palestinian people. Therefore, we ask the United Kingdom, the United States, and Israel, the three of them. And this is official. This is an official request. 
we ask them to recognize their responsibility for this major crime that was committed against our people and to apologize. We ask for a remedy and redress and for compensation to the Palestinian people compensations that would be decided by the international law. Whatever you decide, we will accept it. We want recognition of the injustice. And do you think this will take place? No. Sad enough, ladies and gentlemen, the United States and several European states which are calling for the two-state solution and recognize the state of Israel. They say that we want the two-state solution, we support the two-state solution, we recognize the state of Israel, fine, but where is the other state? Well, no, that other state, the other state exists, it is there. Recognize it for things to, to proceed, for peace to be upheld. These states did not recognize the state of Palestine so far, and they threatened to use the veto right if we try to ask for a full membership in the international organization. If we ask, or when we ask for the full membership, they threaten us to use the veto right. To whom can we complain? To God. Palestine, the observer state in this organization for 10 years now, has proved that it qualifies for full membership. You all, you have all recognized this. Palestine have been working seriously and in full responsibility with the other states of the world and the different committees and specialized organs, and it has uh, uh, chaired the, uh, successfully the G77 and China. We are an observer state, and despite that, we have chaired the group and we have succeeded in our works. So why aren't we allowed to be full members, what are we lacking? Why can't these states recognize the state of Palestine and accept its full-fledged membership in the United Nations? Therefore, we wish, and therefore we beg, and therefore we plead, and we reiterate our request to get this full, full membership now. And we ask, why are you implementing double standards against us? We are the exception. We are the only ones in the world on whom double standards are being applied. On the other hand, I would like to call upon the Secretary General of the United Nations to work relentlessly to elaborate an international plan to end the occupation of the land of the State of Palestine to achieve peace security and stability in the region in line with the resolutions of the international legitimacy and in line with the Arab Peace Initiative. The Arab Peace Initiative has been violated by some, but it is there, it exists. The resolution is Resolution 1515, so why don't we implement it? Ladies and gentlemen, when, when we hear something positive, we acknowledge it. And yesterday, I listened to the U.S. President Joe Biden and to the Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid and to other world leaders. I heard them supporting the two-state solution. And we are thankful for that. This is, of course, a positive development. But the real test to the seriousness and credibility of this stance, because we have had enough resolutions and enough words, so the true test to the credibility and seriousness of this stance is for the Israeli government to go back to the negotiation table immediately, tomorrow to implement the two-state solution in line with the resolutions of the relevant international resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative, and to end all the unilateral measures that undermine the two-state solution. 
you cannot negotiate with me while you, you are expanding the settlements and killing and demolishing. No, these unilateral actions should end, at least temporarily. You should end temporarily these acts and let us negotiate. If the negotiate, negotiations fail, then you can go back to whatever you want to do. But if you want to negotiate, you have to stop these unilateral measures. The state of Palestine is looking forward to peace. Let us make this peace to live in security, stability, and prosperity for the benefit of our generations and all the people of the region. We want peace. We are fighting terrorism wherever it is. And you know perfectly well that between us and 85 states in the world, we have signed agreements to fight terrorism. No one can deny that. What more do you want? We are ready for this initiative. To conclude, I would like to tell my people and the whole world that I am proud to have spent decades of my life struggling with my brethren, the leaders of the Palestinian people. Some have passed and some are still alive to have fought in order to uphold the rights of our courageous Palestinian people, which has given the best example of sacrifice. And despite all the conspiracies and all the pressure that were placed on us and on our people, we have upheld our independent national decision. No one can interfere in our independent national decision. No one can interfere. The decisions we take are ours, and no one can interfere. We are also attached to our national constants that are well known. And we reiterate our rejection to any orders or directives from whoever. No state can give us any directives or orders, whether big or small. We take or we make our own decisions. I would like to pay tribute to the martyrs of the Palestinian people who have lit the way to freedom and independence with their blood. They will remain symbols to be remembered by the coming Palestinian generations generation after generation, and we will honor the responsibility they left us. As for our brave prisoners, they are the living conscience of our people. They are sacrificing their freedom for the freedom of their people. I would like to pay tribute to the brave prisoners who are living martyrs. They have taken four or five life sentences. They are in prisons, but they are heroes and they are our leaders. Their freedom will, will be our fight and we will not fail them until they are freed. We will not fail their sons and their daughters. We will not fail our, their families and their relatives. I would like to tell them and to tell our children prisoners. Some of them are seven, eight or 10 years old and they are prisoners. What do we do about that? Look at this picture, one child and 30 soldiers arresting him. Is it acceptable? Tens of thousands of children are in prison. Who can accept that? Which international law, which conscience can accept for a seven-year-old child to be imprisoned and prosecuted? Legally speaking, he is not responsible for his acts. And I would like to tell the hero prisoner, Nasser Abu Hamid. Nasser Abu Hamid 
was indicted and convicted. Look at him, how he was and how he is now. He is waiting for his death. Any time now. His mother is asking to see him for a single minute. Why aren't you allowing his mother to see him for a single minute? She is a mother of a martyr. Nasser Abu Hamid is a hero, is a martyr, and she has among her sons prisoners and martyrs, and she wants to see her son for a single minute before he passes away. No religion, no law can accept this. From this rostrum, I would like to pay tribute to the mother of Nasser, the mother of martyrs and of prisoners. Unfortunately, the occupying power did not allow her to see her son, the hero, the prisoner, for a single minute while he is struggling against death because of medical negligence. He is a cancer patient. He is a, a prisoner. He committed a crime, but from the human point of view, he should be treated, but he's not allowed to be treated, he's not allowed to see his mother, and no one is allowed to see him even after he passes away. Uh, they, they take the, the prisoner who passed away uh, and they do not allow his family to take him back. This has been going on since 1967. There are mart martyrs who are placed in boxes with numbers away from their families. Who can accept that? To conclude, I would like to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you as representatives of the international community and international legitimacy, that occupation will um, end sooner or later. So let us now, you who bear the responsibility for the implementation of your resolution, uh, let us achieve that in order to build a, just a comprehensive peace instead of achieving peace with more sacrifice. Dear brothers, we have waited too long. We are tired. Do you have a solution? I need a solution. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the, pres thank the President of the State of Palestine for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.